Lawrence, I was talking about trends. Um, and, and I know that people are like, well, how will I know the trends? How can I find trends? Can you want to, I, I gave you the screen. Uh, you could take it over. Can you talk to them and show them a little bit about how they can watch trends and follow trends? Yep. Yep. I got you. Perfect. So I'm going to stop mine that. so you can share yours. All right. Perfect. Boom here and let's go. So we have trading view here. So trading view. Um, obviously, I was looking at Tesla today. Uh, big time shout out to Tesla. Um, it rallied back over a thousand. So TradingView is a trading platform for all those that are new. Um, TradingView is a technical trading platform that you can actually use uh, to actually plot and do your charts. Um, I tell people that charting, uh, when it comes to long-term investing, um, you want to make sure that you're staying on the bigger time frame. So there's some people that are new to charts. There's a book that I recommend everyone to read. And this is Charting and Technical Analysis by Fred McAllen. Um, he really does a great job of actually breaking down. Uh, this is a historical book. of really breaking down charts for people. So Charting and, and Technical Analysis by Fred McAllen, a great book. So when it comes, and you'll hear me reference um, this book uh, throughout this part. So we want to be able to really identify trends. So I always tell people that when it comes to taking a look and taking a look at trends, we want to start off on the weekly and the monthly time frame. So first, I want to actually use a stock and I want to use Apple. So I want to go to Apple and we want to take a look at Apple on the monthly time frame. So as we see, Apple will follow here if we hit this all time chart. And we'll see that this all time chart here for Apple, if we take a look back all the way to 2008. Apple was about eight dollars a share. We see it's now at one hundred and seventy five dollars. So we've been able to determine that this stock is in a uptrend. So now this is where we'll go down to the weekly time frame. And so the weekly time frame, a lot of times we look for a lot of these trends. And so one of the major trends that really make up charts, and it's covered here in pretty much chapter one of this book. Chapter one of this book talks about primary trends, secondary trends, but also what makes up a stock that's moving up higher highs and higher lows, and also lower lows and lower highs. So I'm going to show you examples of stocks that have been making what lower lows and lower highs. There's one stock on my mind that I know right off the bat that's been making lower lows and lower highs, which is actually a bearish trend. So if I see a stock on a weekly time frame that is actually making lower lows and lower highs, go ahead and take a look. Look at this visual and we're going to come over to Boeing. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Now we may be going back and making another lower high. We'll see. And so a lot of times when we see stocks move in lower lows and lower highs, a lot of times we see stocks trend downwards. When we see a stock that's consistently making higher highs and higher lows, this is why, for example, the S&P 500, the SPY, which measures our overall market, this is why you consistently see the SPY continue to go up. We've been seeing that the SPY over time has what? Been making higher highs, higher lows. And so let's go. Higher highs and higher lows. So this is what makes up a chart. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. And as we continue to see, this S&P 500 has consistently been making higher highs and higher higher lows consistently, which is why the S&P 500 is at a all time high. So charting and technical analysis can help you spot things from far away that are getting ready to happen. So I'm gonna show you an example in this book here. I'm gonna show you an example of what is called a double top. So a double top is actually covered here in this book. A double top is a bearish reversal pattern. So anytime we hear the word bearish, we're expecting what? The stock to actually go down. So we have double tops. What is a double top? So I'm gonna show you a couple companies that actually had double tops. Roku is one of them. And this is how you could spot Roku from pretty much a mile away. You had a double top here, one top here, one top here. And this is on the weekly time frame. So I wanna make sure that I'm not going over anyone's head. When you see a pattern like this, a double top pattern, 
You will see this more often. Obviously, it talks about this in the book. This is the inability of the second peak to actually move above the first peak and is the first sign of weakness. So what do we see? Textbook definition here. The inability for this second peak to move ab above this first peak. So this is where we see a double top play out here. Roku, when it had this double top, it was at 488. Now it's at 226. So this is the this is the technical reason outside of just the fundamental reasons, the news that comes out that can actually really help you be able to see from a mile away what's actually happening here on these charts. You see a lot of times the news and the technicals correlate together. So anything that happens from a technical standpoint, a lot of times you see it correlate with the news standpoint. If you're going to options trade, it's not just about saying, well, I like Apple. Let me just go out and just buy Apple option. We want to make sure that we're actually looking at stocks in a proper way. I know everyone's favorite on here. Um, a lot of people really love Square. Square, similar thing. We had a double top pattern play out here. A double top is a bearish reversal pattern. We've seen Square on this weekly time frame. It's actually been moving to the downside. I have a technical indicator here, which is called the MACD. The MACD is a conversion of the 12 EMA and the 26 EMA. These are two moving averages. So the 12 day EMA and the 26 EMA. A lot of times the MACD can help people determine where the direction of price is getting ready to go from a momentum standpoint. So it's key that we're kind of looking at these charts to really see and understand what's actually happening here. A lot of times we're able to identify the trend. So this is where Troy, I know Troy talked a lot about saying, hey, I like Square at 170, 160 in these areas. Troy wasn't just saying that for any reason, just because that was a number he just pulled out of a hat. He said this because he's seen something from a technical standpoint. Why? For the earners that have been on here, um, for the 600 plus earners, big time love and shout out to you guys. You know, I've consistently talked about guys even back here when Square was at 230 and 240. I said you would get a better price here. I know Ian said he sees Square going to 130. I wouldn't rule that out either. 130 is a major support level on Square. So Ian, once again, is not just putting these numbers out of a hat, guys. These are all, these are numbers where we see from a technical standpoint as well. So what I tell people is, is that you want to buy quality companies when they go on sale and when they go cheaper. A lot of times you can see that from a technical standpoint. So the arts of charts is really here in this book. Now, I tell people, man, it's important and imperative that they actually read this book. Uh, this is a free PDF version for the earners that are here. I'm actually going to go ahead and copy this and drop this in the chat. So this is for y'all. Everyone else, you can go on Amazon and get this book for $15. $15 to basically go ahead and learn how to read charts on Amazon, uh, to this book. So this book, like I said, is imperative, is important, and it's great for you guys to go ahead and start reading and doing some studying. So in part here, when you're taking a look here at Square, I really like Square. Um, Square is a great long-term investment, but we wanna buy our long-term investments at great technical levels. Like we really wanna buy our long-term investments at great technical levels. And the reason why I say this is, this can save us from getting in trouble, especially a lot of times with the options. Now imagine someone buying an option that was you know, a leap option at 250 compared to buying it maybe at 170, 180. So this, this is the difference. A lot of times we just don't wanna buy, we just don't wanna buy things just because boom, we like the company here Boom, we want to be able to see, hey, from a technical standpoint, where can we actually see a sell off? Also, to help as well make sense, you have something that's called a weekly squeeze. So I'm about, this is something I talk about a lot of times. Uh, Microsoft saw a major uptick, guys, um, when we saw all time highs come in October uh, for Microsoft. And also, we also saw it come for uh, NVIDIA as well, too. So now I'm going to drop down and go to the daily. So what actually happened here? So we saw a stock pull back to a major support level. So how do I actually get these support levels? I use hold, what hold, hold on, Lawrence, for a minute. YouTube, the book costs $15, man. Stop being cheap. Just buy the book. <laughs> like, y'all got to stop, man. This is extremely high level information. This is like on the scale of Harvard or Yale or Princeton. And some of you guys aren't paying attention and you're worried about the wrong things and you're trying to get a free link. Even if you're trying to get the free link, just I'm sure you can Google how to get the free link 
to the book. The book costs fifteen dollars. That's not the most important thing right now. Like this is extremely high level information that could be charged thousands or fifty thousand dollars for. Like this is like a college course right here. Like this is we don't have to do this. So just pay attention and get the information and stop worrying about the wrong things. All right. Appreciate that. Um, so the tool that I'm actually using here to actually go ahead and draw is the trend lines. So I actually want to go ahead and erase my chart here, erase my, remove my drawings and start from scratch. So for people always have a question is like, how do I start off with, you know, technicals? How can I start off by plotting my uh, points on my chart? What I try to look for is I try to look for multiple touches where a stock comes to uh, multiple times and actually comes to a support or a resistance. So what is support and what is resistance? So let's highlight that here. We're going to use our trend line tool here. And this is where you kind of want to go over your charts. You're not going to get everything the first time. You know, you want to look back over. So I see obviously here this at one point, February 10th of this year, um, excuse me, of 2020, excuse me. This was actually an all time high for Microsoft and the stock pulled back to a support. So boom, I come here. I'm able to get another point and another plot. So a lot of times stocks like to trade at or above supports and resistance. And when a stock breaks above an all time high or breaks above an important resistance level, a lot of times you see the stock tick up. And so once again, what do you see kind of highlighted here? You see what? Higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. So you kind of consistently see that happening here. So what I'll do is I'll go throughout my charts and I'll look for major points where the stock hit and it either broke above or it potentially broke below. And so looking here, we pretty much have seen that this stock here, Microsoft, is pretty much trended up. And Microsoft has been one of the most talked about stocks, obviously I know on Market Mondays and been one of the you know highly successful stocks of the decade. Um, and so I kind of go through my chart and look for common areas and points and try to plot those out and get those right here. You actually see Microsoft right now is for, is at a major support level here at this 316. So we saw it continue to test that 316. And what did you see? You saw it bounce out. So now Microsoft closed today at $333. A lot of times we like to buy stocks long term or we like to buy our leap options at major supports on quality companies. So keyword I'm, quality, keyword quality, keyword quality. And we're <laughs> going to talk about we're going to talk about the difference because, um, you know, we're going to talk about some of the some of the high growth names that you want to stay away from doing these type of strategies with. But this is how, like, I basically would set up like a chart trend lines on a chart um, as a long term investor just looking for areas and plots and points where I see the stock has maybe pulled back down to where the stock is pulled back up to and broken through. And this is where you kind of see the cycle kind of consistently. What? So we've seen Microsoft, what has made consistent higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, a small, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high. And then we saw a higher low. So guess what's going to happen next to Microsoft potentially here, not a guarantee, but potentially Microsoft is gonna make another higher high and we'll see if that plays out. So this is like how you can read stock charts at really a, a basic level and it can really help you out. I always tell people that this is like stock chart reading takes time to understand, but really reading that book and really taking the information in is going to help you. And the more consistently that you look at charts, it is going to make sense. I'll be honest. I did not learn stock chart reading in a year. So it took me honestly about two, three years to really, I would say, master it on my own. Is that to say it's going to take you two to three years? No, it could it could be faster. How, mu how much time are you going to be dedicated to put in to being able to understand and read charts? Also, as well, I want to explain a couple indicators. Now, this this is something that's called a 20, 50 and 200 day EMA daily. So a lot of times, and let me remove a indicator that I have here, and I'm going to add on trading view here, this 20, 50, and 200 day EMA. So I'm going to basically, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you guys how to exactly look at when a stock is actually going to move in a downward direction. 
So a lot of times stocks like to trade in between their 20 and 50 day moving averages, which is this red and this green line. Typically when they hold this red and green line, that typically leads to positive uh, movement from a stock. What I'm going to show you is, is that over the past, we're going to all time chart this. And I'm going to actually show you, and let me stay on the page here. I'm going to actually go ahead and show you how you can actually see Microsoft is actually traded actually above its 20 and 50 day EMA and it's consistently traded above that since COVID. So what actually happened when COVID came? What is the technical reason outside of just coronavirus cases coming, et cetera? What was the technical reason for the market actually coming down? We actually saw a break below of the 20 and 50 day EMA. And we came to this blue line, which is the 200 day EMA. And it briefly broke below this 200 day EMA. So a lot of times when we see stocks break below their 200 day EMAs, that's where we kind of see stocks pull back and have a downturn. Now notice when I mentioned earlier, I talked about when were the few downturns that happened? This was in 2020 coronavirus, but also what happened here? The entire market was down for the last three months in September, 20, September 2018 to December 2018. What happened in these months? Donald Trump went into a trade war with China. He, lived, he basically raised tariffs of 15% on all Chinese imported goods. Also, the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell also raised interest rates to a benchmark rate of 2.25 to 2.5%. So the cost of borrowing increased for a lot of companies. Um, the companies were put under pressure um, because of the tariffs that they had to pay. So your apples had to pay extra taxes to actually get their goods across seas. So it's important and imperative that we look at this from a technical standpoint and we'll back test and see. We'll zoom in here. So we saw this was that 2018, we saw the 2020. Now notice a lot of times a, a stock like Microsoft, look how healthy it is. Every time it's kind of hit its 200 day EMA, it's kind of actually been able to hold. Now what actually happens when a stock actually breaks below its 200 day EMA? What's happened again here? We have to pretty much, really we can look at 2010 here. We see a little bit of a breakdown. And you kind of see that what happens usually when stocks break below their 200 day EMAs, that's usually where you see the downturns. But when was that last major downturn? We saw boom the 2008 financial crisis. We saw pretty much that Microsoft broke below the 200 day EMA. So this is something that I tell people that I look at, especially when I'm buying, you know, a lot of these longer term investments um, is I'm paying attention. Now I want to use the S and P 500. Now the S&P 500 tracks our market. So from a technical standpoint, I'm gonna give you a breakdown of why, and I'm gonna remove these drawings here. So it's actually clear. I'm actually gonna show you why, I start, why our stock market hasn't corrected. We've actually just been in a major healthy uptrend full of what? Higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. And we made a, a big run here throughout this part of 2021. But what's happened here, guys, we've actually just been trading on our 20 and 50 day EMAs. I can show you that we haven't even sneezed at the 200 day EMA, which is sitting here now at 424. So our market is far away from any type of correction. So what do we see here? We saw a break below the 200 day EMA here on the S&P 500. And when COVID came, that's why we saw that 36 percent downtrend. We also saw this in 2018. Boom here. We also saw this early on in 2018 as well here, but look, we were able to hold it at the 200 day EMA. So a lot of times a great place to buy quality companies is at their 200 day EMAs. We saw here Ebola, we saw the crisis here. So we saw a breakdown in our markets in 2015. The Federal Reserve actually started quantitative easing again um, in 2013. So we've seen the markets actually push up. Then as well here, we saw a breakdown, but what do we kind of consistently see? Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, and then continue to move upwards. Now I'm gonna show you in 2008, we broke below our 200 day EMA. So guess what's usually a stock, but since this is the entire market, the S&P 500, we stayed in this downtrend guys, until we broke back above the 200 day EMA. That's when the markets actually started to move up higher again. Now I'm gonna take you back down to the dot-com era. This is why the stock market actually pulled back. 
we broke below our 200 day EMA. We had a lot of, but also guys, what do you see here? You see a pattern that I've been talking about. Lower low, lower high. Lower low, lower high. Lower low, lower high. Lower low, lower high. Lower low, and now we've broken out and we broke above the 200 day EMA. So I can apply lower lows and lower highs, higher highs and higher lows pretty much to any time frame in any chart. So that's now- too, yo, yo, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's, that's so much game. Fires. We need fire emojis in the chat right now. I'm like, yo, wait, we ain't talking about this. <laughs> My guy Lawrence is going crazy right now. I got some too, Lawrence. I got some. I'm gonna give him a little game because you you took it there. So I'm I, I think I gotta take it there. Let me take it there in a second. For sure. All a right. Lot of, a whole lot of game. That's a whole lot. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm gonna let you go. Oh my bad. My bad. I yeah. Go ahead. All right. Bad. Bad. Yes, sir. So I wanted to I wanted to really show you guys this because. The when a stock, like I said, when a stock breaks below its 200 day EMA, a lot of times that's when we move into a, you know a bear market on a particular stock, or we see the the overall markets move into a bear market. So guess what? Look at how it every time it tried to break above its 200 day, see how it struggled. So we stayed in a in a downtrend. Yes, there was you know political things that happened, certain things that happened in the economy, but we can also combine those with our technicals. And we actually see that highlighted here. We see what? Lower low, lower high. Lower low, lower high. Lower low, lower high. Lower low, lower high. Now I'm gonna blow your mind with this next one. Levels that matter today could potentially matter in the future. And I'm gonna show you what exactly ExxonMobil did when the pandemic came. ExxonMobil, all it did was come back down to a 2002 support level. So we saw what? We saw the stock broke below its 200 day and we saw consistent what? Lower low, lower high. Lower low, lower high. Lower low, lower high. Lower low, lower high. And we consistently made lower lows and lower highs and we moved down. Now, look at this. This candle, this uh this wick right here. This is a wick. We saw this happen in March 2020. But look at where look at the level where it rallied out of. So a support level today maybe is maybe a major support level in the future if, if a stock ever comes back down. So look, all ExxonMobil did was actually come back down here into this 2002 level. So we like to buy stocks at major support levels. Some people ask me, why did you buy Boeing at 110? So all Boeing did was it erased all of its gains and it came back down to a major support level dating back here from February 2016 and also September 2013. So Boeing came down here in one week and Boeing, boom, hit this 100 level. It actually broke, I think it went to 90. But look at this, here, February 2016, hit that $100 level. Boom, here, September 2013, hit this $100 level as well too. So this was a major level. We had one, two, and now three levels. So what can I anticipate if Boeing was to ever come back down to this level? well, we could potentially expect a major bounce because this is a major support. What qualifies a major support level? One touch here, one touch here, one touch here. There's three touches on a major support level. Institutions buy stocks at major monthly and weekly levels. And so um, this kind of gives you guys a basic technical analysis breakdown of really how you can read stocks at a high efficient level. You don't need 50 indicators on your charts. You can use the 20, 50 and 200 day EMA. This is how I would read stocks as a long-term investor if I'm looking to look at long-term positions. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop there. And Charting and Technical Analysis by Fred McAllen. It is a must get book, a must read book. If you do not read that book, you're doing yourself a disservice. Um, so no, a, tr a tremendous disservice. My graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> A mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop.